We're gonna be doing the full service for the Nike. Obviously, we're gonna be going over a little more than we have to, but it's because this scooter is from 2008. It got over 8,000 miles. No one has never done a maintenance on it, no oil change or anything. So we're gonna change literally everything from the bell to the barrier. We're gonna be installing the Maxi High Speed Polini barrier with the night roller. We're also gonna be changing the bell for the original Piaggio one. We're gonna be installing new pads with the Malosi one, new the red chili filter, the Viridian spark plug, the Malosi spark plug. We're gonna be doing a coolant flush too with the steel wire and adding new coolant. We're gonna be doing an oil change. Literally everything, changing the oil rings, not everything. Let's get into it. So here are the things we're gonna be using to do all the service we got from starting point which is I'm gonna start by degreasing and cleaning the bike so we can work more comfortably so we can install the new Polini high speed uh, barrier and we're also gonna be changing the bell you know replacing the o-rings we're also gonna be within the coolant flush we're also gonna be doing the oil change we got here very cleaner we're also gonna be changing the filter iridium spark plug and the Malosi spark plug cable too and also the brake pad front and the rear one I'm gonna start by cleaning the bike so let's get into it Then after you leave it like for 10, 15 minutes, you let it sit very nicely and the parts where you must see like grease build up, you can get a brush and you know go over it. You want to give it a really nice rinse because you want to get rid of that heavy duty degreaser. So. to the whole engine you obviously want to be careful with the electric part what you want to do is you, if you have an air compressor or a, you know, a blower or something you want to dry the whole engine pretty well before you start it or anything yeah, before it's ready for work because we're going to start by doing the, the coolant flood let's get started <laughs> So 
here are the tools you're gonna need. All you're gonna need is a Phillips screwdriver, a six millimeter Allen key to remove the exhaust. In different cases, depending on the exhaust that you have, it might be different, but on my case, it's a six millimeter Allen key. You also wanna have a 10 millimeter wrench, another 10 millimeter wrench, a bigger one if you wish. If you have the stock pipe, it's a 17. Then all you're gonna need is also a coolant, 50 by 50 antifreeze coolant. You can use any of the recommended from the manufacturer too, but in my case, here in Florida, this is what we have here, so. You also want to grab yourself at the local store a couple of bottles of distilled water because we're going to be flushing since it has like many years without being flushed. Also, you're going to need a new oil ring. Don't forget to buy one of these new one when you do your coolant flush. It is always recommended to do it every two years, so you always want to have one of these in hand. After you remove the pipe, uh, also you want to get ready like a tray or something to hold the water here when you drain the pump. So you just want to have something to you know hold it. Also, you want to twist the, this over and you want to screw these fasteners right here. So once you have removed the pad on the top and you have everything removed the exhaust, you got your tray here ready for you know receiving the, the, the old cooling. You want to get some bags and you know cover your your body work the best you can and you want to grab your Phillips screwdriver and proceed to unscrew the one here in the top it might be pretty hard so you want to grab your right side Phillips screwdriver and when you put it on you want to apply some force into it and then break the seal like that see once you start screwing you want to have this on hand because once you release the last one, it's gonna start dripping. So you wanna be ready. Okay, there you go. proceed the cap here in the top you see how actually it's gonna start dripping even more sometimes this might be like really really tight in my case not that much that's where you want to be more careful it's release all the pressure actually it doesn't look that bad though open up your helmet compartment you come here into the engine and you're gonna look for this big hose right here and you want to find that little cap right there this one right there so you want to remove that one which is the bleeding make sure you don't lose this rubber piece because this is pretty important so I'm gonna set it here in a side and then with an 8 millimeter wrench you want to come here and you want to open up this bleeding screw and you're gonna see how you actually is gonna start draining more and more coolant from the from here in the bottom you remove it you want to be careful because this is that little o-ring you don't want to lose that you want to check also the condition of it and if it's pretty bad you want to replace that you want to put this in aside because you want to give it a nice clean because it's all you know corroded you don't want to lose that okay so once you have flushed all the old coolant the next thing you want to do is you want to put the cap on back you want to leave the old o-ring to proceed and install this cap again usually if you do this at the right time you don't necessarily have to do this but since i don't know when was the last time they did a flush on this i want to like really do like a really deep flush on this thing so what i'm gonna be doing is i'm gonna put the back on everything i'm gonna put on the, the distilled water and then you just want to actually run the pipe with the distilled water so you flush the whole cool old coolant <laughs> with your 8 millimeter wrench and with your bleeding screw then you just want to set that back in there you don't want to go too tight on this you just want to like do the whole thing knock it in there and then just leave it in a little bit open then you want to have in hand a hose preferably be transparent so you can see through and you want to plug that hole in there and if you want you can route that 
the hose to the bottom of the bike. Then you wanna grab your distilled water. and actually run the bike for five minutes. You're gonna leave this open and you wanna keep an eye on the little holes here in the bottom. You wanna put this here so that's gonna start dripping. And you wanna keep an eye here so you see when it goes down, start you know, refilling it from the bike. And then you want to let the bike cool down a little bit so we can just remove the pipe again and you know flush the whole thing again so let's just wait a couple of minutes and we'll be back in a bike so i'm gonna proceed and remove the pipe cycles you know i flush out the whole thing remove the pipe install everything again remove the bleeding screw remove the cap put everything back on fill it up run the bike a little bit for five minutes let the bleeding screw remove all the air bubbles and everything and then just flush it again and do everything back again so we're sure everything is nice and clean before you proceed to install a new o-ring you want to make sure you clean up the, the surface of all of where the o-ring sits you know you want to remove all that the all you know thickness from the rubber one. Then, once you have 
clean up the surface very well. You want to have some grease so because when you're installing, they don't make this shape it O-rings anymore. As you can see, the shape of it. Now they're like just like regular O-rings. So for you to hold the, the O-ring in place without moving, so you don't have any leaks, you want to apply a little bit of grease so to hold the thing in place. So it makes the job a lot more easier. So you want to wrap your O-ring and you want to apply just a tiny bit of grease, you know, all over the, the O-ring. It's a tiny bit and it's just, it becomes, you know, sticky. And then you just want to set it into that gap. Like on that part, see how it doesn't want to hold in place. See on that part, you want to add a little bit of grease there in that corner and in that corner. A little bit there, there, there. So when you slide, it holds in place with the grease. is really into that gap. If you feel it's not going, you can grab a little bit of grease, you know, force it into it. Make sure it's nice and still. Clean it up. A little bit here in the surface, so it's not greasy. See? Make sure it's nice have your tree screwed with it. And right before you proceed to put it on, take a last look. So you want to go like really careful with it. And you want to proceed and install the pipe because I'm going to be removing it again anyways, but I need to install it so we can put the new coolant on so we can do the right uh, flushing with the bleeding of the that just snug in there it's not necessary to go crazy with it so once we have that plug in we got to install our new o-ring in we got the pipe on now we got ready to add our new coolant run the bike until you see that fluid from the little hose from the bleeding screw come without any bubbles from any air. And as soon as you see that coming out of it with nothing, you can the top of the of the cooling. And once you refill that, you are pretty much ready to go. So once we're done with this, we're gonna keep doing service to this pipe. We're gonna proceed and remove the pipe once again <laughs> to be able to now do the oil change. It's not really hard to do and it makes the jobs a lot, lot more easier. We're gonna be removing this whole assembly, the, the bracket and the wheel to be able to change the brake pads, but we're gonna be doing that for the last thing. But now we're gonna proceed and do the oil change. Everything's nice and clean. We have our tray here ready for that. And let's get the tool that we're gonna need to do that. Okay, we are now proceed to do the, the oil change. Here are all the things you're gonna need to do the oil change for any Vespa GT, GTS, or GTV. Uh, you don't necessarily have to remove the exhaust, but we're gonna do it because we're gonna be doing the rest of the maintenance, changing the pads, and we're gonna be removing the wheel and doing all that great stuff. So 
we take advantage and remove the exhaust to do you know everything more comfortably so of course you want to have in hand a couple of racks you want to have an, a tray an oil tray and of course you're going to need your oil for the gt gts or gtv you can use the 5w40 full synthetic with the the specification of the manufacturer and of course we're going to be testing out the red chili oil filter from melosi looks really nice it's gonna look really cool, you know, performance. Also, you wanna get yourself an oil ring for the drain plug. You wanna get a new oil ring. Let's get into the tools you're gonna need for this. All the tools you're gonna need is basically a 21 millimeter socket to remove the, the actual filter. If you, if you happen to have the tool to remove the filter, you can use that, or you can actually use the big plier like this one to be able to remove that. You're also gonna need a 24 millimeter socket to remove your drain plug. The corresponding wrench, bigger one, just in case to remove the the drape plug sometimes get really tight so, so you can put more torque into it and that's basically all you're gonna need to change in your oil so let's get into it okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to remove your filter so you want to put your tray there have your rack ready in hand and you want to grab your 21 millimeter socket and you want to remove that usually if you have your exhaust it's better to use the pliers because you can get more easy underneath you know you know open the whole thing down and just pry it out the thing but since we removed the exhaust we were able to use a 24 millimeter socket so of course you want to have that ready because you're going to start leaking all the oil and let that drain a little bit then you want to grab your long wrench sometimes really really tight your fingers you can push the get the cap and once you feel it is loose you can just like pull it out it doesn't have that many threads so you can just like just like that see go ahead and remove this from there so it drains more quickly you want to inspect this so if you see any of this metal particles or anything it's a good time to clean it and you don't worry about it but this one seems to be pretty clean. Just give it a nice shake in there. Be cleaning this with soapy water. And you just put it here in the side. So once that drain quite a lot, you wanna come to the other side of the scooter. You wanna unscrew the, the dipstick. It's gonna help to drain the thing for completely. So you remove your dipstick. So while we let that drain, we're gonna proceed and disassemble the CVT cover so we can start working on the, on the belt and changing all that gray stuff. the oil dry out from the engine we're gonna get ready here to start disassembling the cvt cover so we can change our belt to a new barrier clean it, everything up and got the new beautiful belt from piaggio this is the om belt this lasts longer than any other aftermarket belt we're also gonna be installing the new maxi high speed polini barrier kit with the night roller this thing is actually pretty cool and pretty excited about this Let's get into it. So all the tools you're gonna need, you wanna start by having a couple of bottle brake cleaners so you can clean out the, all the components, the, the inside of the CVT cover. You also wanna make sure that you get yourself the right tools to do the job. You wanna, this is a, the tool to remove the clutch, tool to remove the, the barrier with the spacer and the nut. You got the replacing new nut for the barrier, which is always good to replace once you remove it the first time. All you're gonna need is a Phillips screwdriver, a six millimeter Allen key, obviously a torque wrench, so you can put everything at the, at the right torque, a bigger wrench, a smaller one. Also, you're gonna need the eight millimeter socket with the extension arm, a 19 millimeter socket to remove the barrier and the clutch nut, and a 10 millimeter. Let's get into it. So we're gonna start by removing this panel to be able to to do that we need to remove our foot rest here it's on the way then you got a single fastener here in the bottom then you want to grab your 10 millimeter socket and you want to find the knot that is right here in on the back you also want to have in hand some needle pliers you want to remove that fastener right there and that one over there and you're gonna remove that one over there case if you have the original cover you can just like take it out but on my case I have this moving one the nut 
with the washer. The first thing you want to check when you remove it, this bearing right here, you want to make sure that's very smooth, right? This one is very nice. I don't feel or hear anything going on there. So once we are in, inside here in the CVT cover, the first thing you want to do just to keep things nice and clean is just put your lipstick on it so you don't get any dots or anything. The next thing you want to check after the bearings is this. This want to move like freely, you know, you don't want to have any play. It's very nice and smooth. We're up our tool to remove the barrier. We got five millimeter Allen key. So you want to go ahead and place that into the slot. You have actually two slots where you can place this tool. You can actually place it right here or place it right here. You wanna put the washer first, then you wanna put the tool, and then you wanna put the spacer in. When you have set that correctly, it's nice and snug in there. It doesn't move any, anything around. You wanna grab your, your big wrench, 19 millimeter socket. Can go ahead and remove your tool this is the knot that we're going to be replacing with the new one you want to replace always that knot when you remove it I'm not sure the reason why but the manufacturer always recommends it so you can throw this one to the trash then you got a washer here with a special I don't know if you can see clearly from there but if you want to grab a marker don't forget the position of it because you have like a rounded part that it sits in place I don't know if you notice it See this part is like sticking out a little bit more and this is like going into the inside. If you can tell the difference between them, you can just like put a marker, put a mark on it. So it's facing, the one is facing to the front. That all the washer, you got those two washers. So you want to put those in the side. You just want to remove it uniformly. It doesn't look too bad. You can feel those grooves in there. You got 8,000 miles. So it's actually not too bad here, but I highly recommend it to replace like 12,000 miles, I believe. A washer here, remove that washer. Then we can remove the, the actual belt. There we go. And actually remove it. We have the old belt. Now your barrier. let the oil drain pretty well you can actually you know help with the scooter a little bit and twist it like that so you can finally drain the rest of it be careful you don't drop your scooter on top of you okay so once you have cleaned up all the surface here get it ready for the filter you want to have ready your filter, we clean it up with soapy water. You wanna let that dry pretty well, nice and dry. You can go ahead and you know put a little bit of oil here and in the tip of it. You can use a little bit, it's just like to make the, the o-ring slippery. Push that back in. You're actually gonna feel like it gets into that groove. And once you feel it in there, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna grab your new o-ring. And you want to grab your cap and you also want to place the o-ring around it into that group and you also want to apply a little bit tiny bit of oil just to lubricate the rubber piece so when you you stick it in it's nice and slippery it's not pinching and you you wasted the whole thing so make sure it's nice in there so it doesn't fall anything thanks to the oil we apply proceed and screw that back in You're gonna lift that slightly and we're gonna torque that to the correct torque. You're just gonna screw that in there. Okay, the next thing you wanna do, you wanna grab your Malosi filter. Move that 
and something you want to do come over it with oil people sometimes they pour a little bit of the oil here i'm going to proceed and do that and you just want to pour a tiny bit nothing much just tiny tiny bit and then you just want to grab and put a little bit you know it's very critical because this is like the first part that the, the bike gets oil And then you just want to go ahead and screw that. You don't want to go too crazy with this. There is even a tool. I don't have anything really to, you know, be able to do that. I found a way that with the tool of the barrier, with the end of it, you can actually tie that down you know, with the end of it like this. Once the tool felt like that, it's good enough, see? Then we're gonna proceed and torque the drain block. You, know, you don't want to go too crazy, just like 30, like 28, 30 foot pounds. Just snug in there, see? There you go. And that's it. Once you have plugged your new filter with the drain plug, we can proceed and pour down the new oil. We're going to proceed and screw that. Okay, we need to pour 1.4 liters. gotta be right about there so we still have to put a little bit more and you can actually see that the level perfect and that's it you got the oil already in and now we clean the CVT cover and get everything ready to install the new Polini high speed Okay, so we have our, our components here ready for cleanup. You can see how dirty this is. We're gonna be also cleaning the clutch. We can still see we have a, still plenty of light on this clutch, so we are not gonna need to replace it. You're just gonna put a, a bit of grease here on these bearings and you know make sure everything is nice and, and greased. Make sure the seals are, are good because we are also gonna be opening this up so we can install the new Polini spring. So well, we're gonna start cleaning all this gray stuff. You can use brake cleaner or acetone or soapy water anything you want i'm gonna be using some chemical gloves i recommend using some glove with the brake cleaner because i think it's pretty strong and also a toothbrush don't forget to put your safety goggles because you don't want to be spraying you know brake cleaner into your face You want to grab your number 80 sandpaper and you want to sand down all around there here so you break that glaze. You just want to go with the sandpaper. Also with the, with the barrier, you want to grab your, your sandpaper number 80 and you want to break the glaze, you know, you just Go around it like that. Hey, that's all you want to do. See? Just make it break that glaze and just sand it around like that slightly. It should be ready to go. Same with this end. And that's it. That's all you want to do. You break the glaze. You also want to sand down this the, the pads with the with the sandpaper. I'm gonna go over a little bit like that. Remove these rubber pieces if you're using the brake cleaner so you don't want to damage those rubber pieces. So.
once we have cleaned up the whole thing, we got our components here ready for installation. You can see we break the glaze on the barriero and the slider as you can see here. here. You can proceed and install your weight. The weights always you want to keep in mind install the weight is that the metal part, this metal surface, see how this one is a closed end and this is like an open end. You want to always face the metal end clockwise. You can see that the shoes have like a, a, a pointed part and a rounded part. All the pointed part both facing to the top like that. So you wanna go ahead and put the shoes, see, that's the right way. Not like this, it doesn't go, you just only go one way. So once you have your your shoes ready there, you wanna slide that uniformly like that. And you wanna grab everything like a sandwich. You wanna put your chaff, it doesn't matter what size it goes, it's very symmetrical. So you grab it like that with like a sandwich, and you slide it in all the way to the back. And then you can swap your, your chaff into place and that's it install that washer there put your bell on it and then you swap that since we're not going to be installing this i'm just demonstrating you how to install it but okay so let's proceed to unbox the the polini max high speed but here in the box you're gonna get a little bit of the special grease that polini recommend using in their barrier also gonna have your chaff and you also have this little cap with the with the spring. We got the shoes, the burning, and we got the rollers, Polini roller. We got nine rollers. It's gonna feel really awesome. I, I believe this is 9.2 grams. As you can see there. We got nine rollers of 9.2 grams for this baby. Set that in there. We got also the spring for our clutch. We're gonna be installing that baby in. Set that in there. And we got the nice high speed. Body error from me building. Look at that. Brand new. Looks beautiful, man. I wish this remains like that. Dude. Everything is brand new. So let's proceed and get this ready for install. We're gonna be this assembly is not right here. We're gonna need a 46 socket. So we're probably gonna head to the store and buy that socket because we don't have any that big here. So I head to the store to AutoZone and the biggest socket they have was a 45 and it didn't work. So I have to buy this one. So let's give it a shot. See if we can remove that knot with this adjustable wrench. You shouldn't do it with adjustable wrench. You should just buy the right socket. Make sure you buy the right tools before you get your hands into it. We're gonna be installing the spring right now into the clutch. So that's the part we're gonna be using. And we're gonna bring our, our clutch. This is spring is gonna be installing a nice polini. The way you do this is that you should have the, the tool that compress the whole clutch in place because this spring is a very strong spring, so you wanna be careful. Do it the right way. The way we're gonna be attempting to do it is gonna be stepping on top of the thing here, trying to press it down where we break that free. So let's get into it. couple of taps with the hammer and the and the big wrench I thought I was not gonna make it I was about to give up honestly but I got the knot already loose it will break, break that free but now what you want to be careful with it is that I'm gonna try to use these clamps I'm gonna put them just slightly I'm just not gonna press or anything you can see it's now completely loose, so you want to push your shoe on top of it. You want to release one of the clamps slightly first. Set it down and release the other one. Pull it out and then with your feet. There we go. That's it. We break that free. So just with a couple clamps, adjustable wrench, and a big hammer, you can do the job. So here's our clutch so usually the rattle noise that you, you, you hear in the bike comes from this blade so if this blade is loose I'll suggest just replacing the whole clutch assembly but this one seems to be very tight in there we're gonna give it a nice clean these are the, the spring they're gonna be replacing you want to be careful and you want to keep this this piece that is in here in the top I'm gonna put that on the side you can see the difference of the strength of both see you can grab the, the piece like this and you want to twist it 
like that. You can feel how smooth that is, and you can actually hear it still, it still have some grease on it. Check the seal. Okay, remember to put your safety goggles up. Mostly here in the inside. When we have cleaned out the whole uh, clutch in the inside, look how nice and clean it is now in today's side. This one still has plenty of life to it, so we're not gonna be changing this clutch just yet. But maybe in the future we're gonna put a performer one, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> we also clean it up this. We also wanna check this if we have good, you know, movement here. We're gonna be applying a new grease in those bearings. It seems to be pretty well, it doesn't need to be serviced just yet. Maybe, you know, in a 12,000 miles, I can change the whole assembly maybe, or just services. Let me know if you guys wanna see a video on how to service one of those things and change the, the seals and, you know, put new grease on it. It's pretty simple, you know, it takes a little time, but pretty simple if you have the right tools. And so we're gonna proceed and put the new spring, the new Polini spring. It's actually pretty simple. You wanna put obviously facing with the logo facing to the top. I don't know if that matters, but for me it does. <laughs> then you wanna put, put your clutch assembly. And this is gonna be the hard part for me because I don't have the right tools for that. I'm gonna try to, you know, put the clutch in the right position. Maybe you can ask for some help. If you have a friend or someone around that can help you when you push this down, they screw the knot. But in my case, I'm just gonna put the knot there. I'm just gonna press this down. go see how I'm doing it's a little hard once you put the nut in give it a few threads you can sure you are good to go you should torque this if you have the socket around 60 pounds we're gonna tie it down until we we can any plate remove the clutch you can try to twist the, the plate feel the tension it's way stronger and you're good to go so we're now gonna proceed and clean the old grease in the inside here and we're gonna apply some new grease on it and get it ready for installation let's continue with it let's now proceed and prepare the polini high speed variator so let's prepare and open everything so here we have the oil sprint we also got the little plastic cap that is gonna be used to install the pin. It is only just for temporary use for installation. Then here we got our, our pin. Man, look at that beautiful thing. I don't wanna even install it. We got our roller here. I'm gonna open those yet. Our shoes. We got our plate. Look at that beautiful thing. So the first thing you want to do, you want to grab your pin and you can see inside the pin there is a little groove, a little gap. If you put your finger through, you can feel there is a little gap on it. You have to fill that gap with the grease they provide in the kit. Pour a little bit of that grease in there, not too much, you just want to fill up that gap. And then we have to fill up those gaps in here. So if you if you take a closer look here, so you got to fill up that gap in there where I'm pointing right with the, with the field screwdriver in that line. There's a little gap in there that you want to fill up with the grease in both sides. In that side and in this one right here. See that gap right there? And I'm pointing with the tip of the, the screwdriver. That one right there, this gap, you got to fill up that gap all around it with grease. For this old spring, you're going to place it in the inside like that. And it's going to sit in place into that gap, as you can see there. And you got to put some grease in there so the spring sits in place. You also want to have ready your pad. Pads only in goes in a certain way. The rounded part goes facing to the bottom like that. The conic part goes facing to the top. You want to press those in. You want to have everything ready. Make sure you have this in hand. You don't lose it because this is what is going to push that spring into place because when you put this, this inside, the spring is not going to let it go inside. So this bushing, since that conic part you see there, 
see how it's like kind of conic there that's gonna push that spring it's gonna open it up and enlarge it until that is you know sit in place into the into the pin so you're gonna place this in, in there after you put the grease and you're gonna push the pin with that inside and this is gonna push the pushing open it up enlarge it and this piece is gonna come out from the from the back and you're gonna remove it so the first thing you want to do is you want to fill up the pin with the grease so you want to pour you know push it in like that it's gonna be a little difficult to not get messy but pour that in there there you go you see that piece of grease and then with my finger I'm gonna try to you know fill that gap all around it you just put your finger all the way like that and you know try to fill the gap see it's nice and filled with grease clean up the excess in the outside we're gonna have a rack in hand so you clean up all the grease and then you want to pour a little bit on the inside where the butch is see it put a little bit there and try to you know go all around it you just want to fill that gap with a lot of grease your finger like that you see how it's completely flat that's when you know you gotta stop so you want to go over all around you now make sure it's completely filled up with the grease completely fill up make sure you don't have anything left at all we put quite a bit of grease you know I want to remove the excess so I'm gonna clean up my chauffeur and you can grab your piece clean it up because you don't want to have your barrier greasy clean the outside okay so once we have cleaned up pretty well the whole barrier is not greasy on the outside because you don't want to have a greasy barrier trust me you can see how we fill up the whole thing in the inside everything is filled up with the grease yeah we're gonna apply a little more in this one because they say to apply quite a lot so you want to grab a clean rack, a little humid with water, and you don't want to clean this up very well. Make sure it's nothing greasy. So before you insert the roller, the first thing you want to do is you want to insert this plastic pin. So you want to go ahead and install that there and you want to press this uniformly. So you want to go ahead and press that like that, evenly like they say, so you press down that pushing. So it's going to come out from the inside and you're going to push that inside until, you, until this one comes out. And that's it, you just clean up that grease. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then we can proceed to install the rollers. So the way you install your rollers, in this case with the high speed pulling performer, we got nine rollers. The way you install this, you see how one face is plastic and the other one is metal. So you want to put the metal facing clockwise. You always on the rollers gonna have a plastic surface and a metal. The metal one goes facing clockwise. 
So let's proceed on to that. So once you have installed that, then you want to grab your plate and push it into the outside like that. And you want to grab this like a sandwich. Okay. Then you want to grab your whole assembly like that. Make sure it's no grease into the outside, anything here in the inside. I'm going to go ahead and proceed, engage that into the chaff, all the way in. Clean up the excess of the grease here in the chaff. Okay, so after we have torque, this to the right torque which is around 60 foot pounds we're gonna apply a little bit of the grease at the polini we're gonna take advantage and we're gonna apply grease to those bearings here in the clutch because those need to be greased since this is a really high quality grease we're gonna use that to fit those bearings here You have applied a good amount of grease in there. We take advantage that we Polini send our nice high quality grease and we apply that all the inside there. We got all this nice and torque. The way I torque this, since I didn't have the right socket and I couldn't use my torque wrench, you see I put a marker with a marker. I put a mark in there. So when I was with the wrench, I put the big wrench in there and then I hammer it and I use the mark as an indicator that I was tying in the knot itself because it was, you know kind of tricky to do it like that. Now we're gonna proceed and put the belt. We got our new belt here from Piaggio. We're gonna be installing the Piaggio because this one people claim to be the, the one that lasts longer. And you know, Polini recommend you to use with their Barriero, your, you know, the corresponding Polini belt. But we're gonna keep using the Piaggio one because this one is obviously the best for the scooter. So you wanna pay attention to those hardware that you have here. You wanna put those pointing towards the front of the scooter. The way you're gonna do this, you're gonna press down the belt first into the slot here so we're gonna press this down here put the bell in the middle of the of the both plates and then we're gonna proceed and mount everything in place maybe you can use a rack because these these things are pretty sharp so you can put your your hands more comfortably and then you want to twist that like that see there you go. now once you have your your belt inside the clutch you want to come down here and slide that in Turn up the bell. There. You can grab your cap after you sand it down and you you know break that glaze. It's nice and clean. You you wanna grab your washer, the one that was here before, remember? You're gonna grab that and place it in here into that little gap. And then you wanna slide this in. In there. Then you got the two washers, remember? You got the flat one, it goes all the way flat in there and then you got this remember the, the shape of this one it goes into certain position this part the part that goes like in, rounded into the inside goes fencing in and the rounded part that is like into the outside goes facing out like that okay now you want to pull those two and bring your your new knot get the starter some people like to put some lock tie in here right now i don't have any so i'm not gonna apply any just yet i'm gonna do it later then you put your knot there and then we're gonna look for the torque wrench and put that at the, at the right torque i'm gonna put our belt your drum belt slide that in and it should be good to go be ready to put the correct torque Is there? We're gonna torque that between 60 and 65 foot pounds. So we're gonna proceed and put our tongue set or torque ring 65. I always like to put a little more than we actually need to. I always like to make things tight. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into 65. Go ahead and that. Remove our tool and save this in a safe place for your next service. I always like to put the, 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 the foot pounds there so I don't forget them. And we're gonna proceed and torque and mount the CVT cover. As you can see, I'm only using the impact to just get the starter. And then I just come here with the, with the wrench and tie those down to about like 10 foot pounds. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. Let me 
everything is nice and tight. So now that we have swapped the, the CVT cover, we can proceed and install our washer that goes in here and then the nut in place. And then we're gonna turn that into 45 foot pounds. So we just you have installed your CVT cover. The next thing will be to clean up the filter. You got this little filter. We're gonna give it a nice clean because it's all dusty. You see all that dust? Let's give it a nice clean. Let's rinse it with water, soap it water, let it dry, and swap it back in. We're gonna proceed and remove the filter. You need all you need is a Phillips screwdriver. You got fastener all of these holes right here, and there is a single one here. And then here in the top, you got two thumb nuts that you can want. Sometimes they're like really tight. Maybe you can get access from the top and help you a little bit. Got this two here in the top, stop nuts. And then you can pull it out, remove it like this. And as you can see here, we installed before the Malosi filter. Not too bad. We're gonna give it a like quick clean with soapy water. We're gonna also give it a nice clean to this. Let's proceed and do that. clean up our filters you see how nice looking they are got the nice malosi one and the little one nice and clean you can see even my hand through we also have the the om filter here see the difference the thickness of it that's why these have the performance because it let more air into the intake and since we have also a performance pipe this is the perfect choice for that so this filter is actually pretty pretty good you know i mean if you want to use it this is one of the best filters out there but also the malosi one is pretty pretty good so once you have all your filter or nice and oily clean up all this thing in the inside Okay, so we're gonna proceed to start and change our path. We're gonna start and proceed with the rear wheel first, and we're gonna be removing the exhaust with this bracket, and proceed to remove the wheel, and you know, give, take advantage and give it a nice clean hold here in the inside and the engine, degrease everything. So we're gonna proceed and with the tools you're gonna need to be able to remove the rear wheel. So here are the tools you're gonna need. All you're gonna need is a, a big plier so you can remove the pin, long wrench to be able to remove the nut from the wheel, a couple of pliers, clipper to remove all to help remove that clip too. So we're gonna need a T4 because we got our titanium screw there. So we're gonna need a T4 to remove those. Usually you will just need a 6 millimeter Allen key which are the, the stock screws. So with that we're also gonna need a big wrench to use our sockets, a 17 millimeter and a 24 millimeter socket to remove the wheel. And also a 10 millimeter. We're gonna be using an impact to make things quicker but this is basically all you're gonna need.
So once we have removed the exhaust, we can come to this side. On your case, you probably have the OEM cap, so you can just like pry it out. In my case, I have this moving one, go to this one. We have that available on the website if you like it. But what you want to do is you want to use your tool to remove the wheel. So we can lock our wheel and remove the nuts on the other side. If you don't have the tool in hand, what you can use, you can just like put a zip tie on your brake, on your rear brake, and lock the wheel on that way. Usually these brackets can get really stuck in there. You can watch my video on how I remove the wheel with a stuck bracket. And you, there is a technique that we use on how to remove it when, when it gets stuck. So let's see in this case. We put some grease last time and thankfully it's still After you have removed the wheel, we can now proceed and remove these two bolts right here that are holding the caliper. We are going to remove the caliper to change our pad. So we can proceed and remove those. And keep in mind, we got two washers, a thin one and a thicker one. Once you have removed your caliper, you want to grab a flat screwdriver. You want to push the piston back into place. You want to go ahead and put the screwdriver there. And you want to, you know, twist and try to push those ends, see? There's a special tool to do this, but you can just do it like that with the screwdriver. You may damage your pad, your old ones, but since we don't mind about it. So once you push the piston back, you can proceed and remove your pin. You want to remove that clip. And you want to keep that in hand, or you don't want to lose it because they don't sell it as a spare part. So you want to go ahead and remove that pin. If it go flying like that, <laughs> you can be a little bit more gently. So once you remove it, so it comes with this with this clip, little arrow, and it's pointing to the top, that means it goes like that. So you wanna bend this when we reinstall the new pad, because once you remove it, it becomes a little loose, and if it's loose, you're gonna have a noisy break. You wanna rebend this once we install it. So we wanna put this in aside with your clip, and you wanna drop your pads, just like that. So once we have cleaned up our caliper, we can proceed and install the pad. You can see the difference of the thickness between the, the old ones and the new ones. See the different life that they have to it. We can still use this one until the next service, which has the 12,000 miles. It can last a few thousand more. Well, these ones are gonna give you a better braking performance. So we're gonna proceed and install these beautiful babies. So some people claim that there is each one for each side. And I don't think there's any big difference between each one. Just when you remove them, when they're already used, you wanna set them in the same size because one tends to burn faster than the other ones so one becomes more deteriorating than the other ones so I'm gonna slide them in like that set them both in place look out for that arrow there see that arrow there going points to the top where the bleeding screw is you want to set that in there and then you want to grab your pin and you want to slide it into the pad with the finger in the other side you want to go move back and forward until you line it up with the pin, try to keep the, the, the clip in place. You struggle a little bit like that, struggle it around, move the pad, push the pin through. You should be able to push the pin without any trouble with your finger. And then you wanna slide your clip back in. And there we go. Nice and secure. See, once you open up that uniformly, you open up that gap with the flathead screwdriver carefully, you can press it and install our caliper. You can also check the condition of your of your rotor. You can put your finger, you know, go, you feel any groove. You can take a little bit of anti C. Slide the caliper in, line it up with the hole. nice and ready to rock and roll now we can proceed and install back our wheel and proceed to do the, the front one okay so we're gonna proceed and remove our front wheel to change our old pad for the new Malosi ones that we have here we still have the the, the reno that come with the bike synthetic ones we paint them in black when we remove the caliper if you watch that video you can click there and watch how we paint the caliper so you want to leave your scooter that's the first thing you want to do just a little bit, not too much. And then we can push it and remove our titanium screw with a T40. You got the original Allen key one. Uh, it's a six millimeter Al uh, Allen key, I believe. So once we remove 
we well, we can proceed to lift the wheel and remove. So the next thing you want to do is that before you remove the actual caliper, you want to remove these two pins. And this caliper is not like the rear one that we have a, a little clip. This one is a screw by the Allen key and it's pretty strong because you got the lock tight and they're pretty tight. So you want to remove them before you remove the caliper because then it's going to be like really difficult. With a 5mm Allen key, you want to break that. If it's really tight, you may want to use a longer wrench. You want to like, make them really loose so you don't struggle anything. So I'm going to proceed and go to the other side and proceed to remove the actual caliper. Now turn the steering wheel over and the, the screw is going to tend to bring the, the steering wheel this way because of the weight. But I'm going to put my tire there so you hold it for me while I remove my, my caliper. So you want to remove all... Then you want to hold your caliper while you remove the last screw because it's going to tend to fall. So before you remove the pads, you want to push the piston back in. So with a flat screw driver, you can you know, put it inside and twist it over, see like that. That one in, see the little gap there, put it there, then you twist that in. And you see how we push those pistons back. And once you have done that, you want to finish screwing the 5mm Allen key bolts. We got our pads here. We got our clip in there and we're ready to install our new pads. They're the OEM one, which they still have a lot of life to it. But we're gonna head and replace them so we can have more brake performance. I'm gonna crack this open. Got two nice Malossi brake pads made in Italy. Nice. See the difference between the old ones, which they still have a lot of life to it, but you can see a little bit with 8,000 miles, not much. They're good pads. You can save them in the future for, you know, just in case. And we're gonna proceed to install. Something you also wanna take advantage of that is you wanna remove these and you wanna add some new grease in there. Let me just clean that old grease and we're gonna install some new ones. Okay, so we have our grease here. We already cleaned this up. You just wanna add a tiny bit, you know. You don't want to go crazy with that because any grease that gets squished out from, from the rubber pieces is going to end up in your brakes and you don't really want that to happen. And you want to install that back. Some of the grease is going to probably get, you know, stick out. So you want to remove those back again and remove that excess. You just want to be detailed on this part because you, really, you don't really want to have grease around it. You know, then with the with the rack, you want to clean that up. Then after you have greased your piece, and move that out. Make sure there is any grease coming out of it, because it's not going to end up in your brakes. And then what you want to do is you want to proceed and install your pads. So you want to slide this one in. And just push it inside. See how I push it? You push the clip down, and then you want to slide this one with that little tip in here first like that and hold it in place with your finger and then you want to grab your clip you probably want to add some new uh, lock tie on it i'm not going to do it because i don't have anything right now but you should definitely do that then you want to push it slide the pin in you see how i push the pad with my finger then slide the other one and press it to screw those in you don't want to tie those down all the way because you're going to do that once we install our caliper so we can apply the, the right torque <laughs> You are pretty much ready to install your caliper. They may want to go like a little crazy like that, you know, like play around. You don't have to worry about because when the pistons push in, they're going to get, you know, in place. But you want to get them, you know, a little ready so you can slide it in. Okay, so once you twist the wheel over, you want to have your pack nice and ready there. You maybe you want to hold it with your finger, slide it into the, into the rotor. it and port this to the 16 foot pound yeah. our 6 millimeter allen key here there we go there we go and that's it that's pretty much how easy you install the pad for your front wheel now we can proceed and mount the wheel back so before you proceed to put the wheel on what you want to do is you want to tie it down pretty well those pins really 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 tight And then we can apply the right torque into a wheel. Ok, 
Okay, now we're gonna take advantage that we remove the wheel. We have a little more room to change our gear oil. So if that is too tight, you can use a 10 millimeter wrench to help you screw that. Okay, you can screw the whole thing. And I think it's a little bit overfill, I believe. Yeah, because the max point should be around here. So it's a lot, a lot more. Shouldn't be like that. We're gonna proceed and put that back in. And we're gonna proceed and drain the old oil. And we're gonna be putting a new gearbox oil, ADW 90. And we're gonna be adding 250 cc of this exactly. So proceed and do that. So to proceed and drain the oil, what you gotta do, if you, if you don't wanna remove the wheel, you can do it. There is some, some people that have done it like that, like putting a cardboard here in the bottom to drain it without necessarily removing the wheel. But since we're doing the whole maintenance and we change our path, we're gonna be taking advantage and doing that without the wheel. So the screw you want to remove for the drain plug is that one there. That one is the one you want to remove to drain your old oil. So we're going to take our tray, put that in there, and we're going to proceed and break that. Uh, grab with your finger, and that's it. You want to keep an eye on this copper washer. You want to see the condition of it, and if it's still reusable, you can just reuse it, give it a clean, and you can just reuse that one. If not, you can just go to the hardware store and get a new one. Also, you want to remove your, your dipstick. You let all that oil come out. all the oil you want to move that tray out of the way put a rack in there just in case clean all the steel clean our screw our washer then we can proceed to torque that knot between 11 and 13 foot pounds we're gonna do it 13 in my case because I like to put things tight Nice and tight. Okay, so after we have drained our oil, you wanna add 250 cc oil. So the way you measure that, you can guide yourself with the measurement of the bottle that comes with it. It's kind of confusing for you. What you can do if you don't have anything where to measure oil, you can grab, grab one of those kitchen things, fill it up with water, put your measurement with water, fill up a cup of water with the water that you measure, and then you put a mark on it, and that's 250 cc of water. If you don't have like a measurement recipe for oil, you only have your the one for kitchen. Okay, so once we have filled out our oil, we have our measurement here for 200 cc. We're gonna proceed and pour that in. Okay, so after we have poured in our oil, we can come here with the dipstick, clean it up, and all the spill, and give it our first measurement. You can actually see at the level perfect. What you want to do is you want to apply a little bit of anti seed in here. Don't forget to do that. There is the axle and here in the bearing. You want to apply a little bit of anti seed. Then, after you have torqued your wheel bolt, you want to take advantage also and torque your, these two bolts to the same torque specifications of the wheel. The next thing, after we have torqued all the bolts, you want to torque your shock with a 17 millimeter. The shock is about between 30 and 32. We're going to do 32. Okay, so after we have torqued everything, we are now ready to install the nut. So you want to grab the, the washer right in there. You want to put some anti seize also in this nut. Oh. Okay, so we can lock our wheel, and we're going to torque that to 80 foot pounds. Okay. 
and remove the spark plug all you're gonna need is a 5a spark plug socket remover or a 60 millimeter socket so you want to swap your spark plug so you want to fill it with your finger you know once you feel that the socket is engaged you're gonna grab your wrench it's a little bit tight so you just break it Remove the socket from the wrench and put the socket back in. Finish and screw it with your hand. And there you go. We've got the spark plug here. Looking old already. Many, many, many years. In 2008, still have the champion spark plug back in the days. Doesn't look too bad, but it's already too old. Then we're gonna be replacing this baby for the, the iridium. Purple cable, you just see the difference. The new one with the old one. This is the champion, and this is the NGK Iridium. Big, big difference. So, we're gonna proceed. Thread this with your hand, bring it over. I usually put it like this on my finger. So, come down like this here. I feel the slot with my finger, then I proceed to put the spark plug carefully. This is kind of tricky because you don't want to cross thread your spark plug, so you want to be really careful, very gently. When you feel that engage it, it should go thread in like nothing, you know, with any issue, with any force, with anything. Your finger tight, once you feel that engage it, like three to four threads, you can grab your socket. When you feel it's, it's there, I'm gonna grab your wrench. There we go. You don't want to put go like crazy tight. Just snug it in there. It's good enough. It's good enough. This is pretty simple. You don't have to drop the engine or anything. We remove the cable. You can use the same cable if you wish, but you can actually buy just a new head because sometimes with the time, you know, if you put it on there and you feel like you got a little play, it's a good time to replace. That this one seems to be pretty nice, but as you can see, see how the head is completely loose. So if you're doing the maintenance, you want to come here and thread this in you know, all the way in. Make sure this is nice. If you have a little play here, you want a, a, a new head, spark plug head, spark plug or how you call it. So you can just buy this separately or you can get the high performance Malosi cable that we're gonna be swapping in this right now let's give it a shot okay once we have applied a little bit of electrical grease or whatever you call it we're gonna proceed and go underneath the bike mm -hmm. okay so once you have routed the cable there what you want to do next is you want to plug it into that slot there that one over there and make sure it's all the way in there we go don't forget to put your green cap very important so we're going to proceed and plug the spark plug in for me it's a lot more easier if you go into the left of the scooter because with your weight you can push the cable in place you want to feel the direction of the spark plug so you put it in the right direction plug that in and once you hit the click that's ready to go. To run the scooter, uh, make sure we have the right uh, amount of oil and coolant. See how everything works. Okay, let's now run the scooter. See how everything works. Keep, 
keep an eye on the, on the coolant. You want to open it up a little bit right now. I'm going to do that. You keep an eye because it starts circulating, so you want to refill what it just get into the system. Polini high speed, basically. So after you shoot down the bike, let it sit for a minute. We're gonna take a look at the level of the coolant. It needs to be right in the top, right where it needs to be. You can see the level there. So with the coolant, we're good to go. You wanna come here to the dipstick and you wanna measure your oil, see at what level it is. As you can see, we need to add more oil. And we are right at the level. Wanna be just there. So the last thing you want to do is you want to check your battery terminal. So all you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver, a couple of wire brushes, and I'll recommend applying a little bit of thermical grease, some, you know, some de-electric silicone compound. You can find this at the local hardware store. So we're going to proceed and screw the four fasteners that are holding here the, the battery cap. In our case, we have the, the floor rack. If you want to get yours, you can find yours at thescootabout.com. This thing is pretty, actually pretty useful. We don't see any corrosion. You don't necessarily have to do it if you don't see any corrosion, but we're gonna do it so we, some, we have some nice connection and fresh clean. Once you clean that out, you can apply a little bit of that with the electric silicone. Nice and tight. We gonna make sure these cables is bended like that because if not, it might be a little close to the exhaust or to the cylinder head and it might be... Nice and tight and then you wanna tie that cable there pretty nicely. So after we have cleaned up our terminal, we're gonna proceed and check the battery. We don't have any tester here or you probably don't have any at home or anything. You could probably go to the AutoZone or one of those local stores where they can check your battery for you if you want. But I'm gonna show you here where the multimeter will show you when the battery should be, in, you know, considered a good life. This won't tell you anything about the life of the battery at all, but it will give you an idea a little bit of how the, the voltage of the battery is. So, and we're gonna proceed and turn this on into DC bolts. Set it here for you to look at it. And we're gonna plug put our terminal here negative with the positive and it shows 12.6 that's pretty good that's a pretty full charge battery or if it shows 12 volt or below that you will have to replace that battery we're good to go and that's it we're ready to go so 
So another thing you don't want to forget is your throttle play. You don't want to forget and check your throttle play. This one we have a little more that you should have. So you want to adjust that cable. So if you come down here to the bike, you're going to see these two cables. This is the, the push and this is the pull. So you want to adjust the one in the front. The one is facing down. This is the one that's going to adjust the free play. So you see we have a lot of free play there. So what you want to do is you want to unscrew it. So it pulls the cable back. So if you actually, you see the mark that we have here from the corrosion on the water. So that's where it was there. You see the, the, the free play that we have quite a lot. So if you pull it all the way back and you start moving that cable, you're going to see how you're going to actually reduce that free play. See? Because you see how the actual throttle goes back and forward. See the amount of free play that we have here? And if we start pulling back, you see how the actual throttle moves? You want to have a little play, you know? You don't want to be too tight in there. That's about right. It's nice and tight, but we got some free play there. Just tiny adjustments, see? And that's it. Something else you want to take care of it is your lever. You want to apply a little bit of some grease or any into the pivot so it's nice and smooth. So we're going to proceed and apply just a tiny bit. Nice. You don't necessarily have to do this, but you know, I like to do it because it makes the lever feel so smooth. Nice. You may want to also add here your helmet compartment so the lock works very nicely. Then you just spray a little bit there. So everything works smoothly. Clean everything there with the rack. Nice. That doesn't get messy. And then push the bottom a couple of times. have a top cake you may want to take care of the of the lock too you want to apply a little bit of some grease there because this lock sometimes gets a little bit stuck then you want to put a rag in there and spray a little bit and last but not least you want to grease your seat this pin right here you see how it makes that noise and you don't want to overlook that because it gets really corroded and it, with time it gets really bad. I have seen some pins like really eat up by the corrosion. I'll show you one, the one that I removed from my ET4, the image that I'm showing you right now. You see how it, the corrosion literally eat the whole thing. So you don't want to forget and grease that pin in there. So you want to put your rack up. So all the tools you're gonna need to remove your center stand You may want to have a spring tool in hand Some grease, not exactly this one But any type of heavy duty grease You're gonna need some pennies So we can remove our, our springs a little bit more easy A 17 wrench, a 17 socket Some extension to be a little bit more easy A long wrench and a torque wrench so we can put the right torque so let's get into it so we're gonna proceed and take care of our center stand as you can see at the beginning of this video you can see how my center stand gets stuck when i pull the scooter down you can see it doesn't go all the way up you want to remove your stand and take care of that so the way you do that you want to put your scooter on a wheel shock or find a way to hold your scooter if you have someone to help you out to hold the scooter while you do this job uh, you probably have to do that but if you have a wheel shock you can you know secure your motorcycle without the center stand or if you have a side stand you can put carefully your bike on the side stand and work your way out like that the first thing you want to do is you want to remove your sprint so the way you're gonna do that you want to grab a bunch of pennies Once you have filled up your spring like that, you can proceed and drop down the scooter and you will see how that spring is gonna come down loose very easy.
come closer here into your brake reservoir, you can see this little crystal right here. My brakes are really bad looking, so don't pay attention to that. So if you take a closer look here into your crystal, you should have a tiny little bubble there. That should be the right amount of fluid that you have in your reservoir. But if you see that it's like more space than that little bubble, open up this reservoir and top that up with brakefluid.4. So if you need to bleak your brakes, you can watch my video on how I do that. You can clip out there and watch the video on how to bleak your brakes. So we are good to go here. So if we come here into the left side of the scooter, you can see we got a tiny bubble there too. You can probably juggle the scooter around to see if you don't see it, but we have a tiny little bubble there. So we are good to go here. Also, you don't want to forget to check your steering wheel. If it's nice, the bearings, it's always nice to check your steering bearings like once a year or once every two years because those tend to get a little loose or get corroded with the weather if you get a lot of rain or anything. So you know, it's always good to check your steering if it's nice and tight or if they are over tight or if your bearings are getting shocked or anything. It's a very important thing because you don't really want to ride a bike with a steering wheel loose because that's dangerous. The way you want to check this, you don't want to do it on the ground because you cannot feel the smoothness for completely because it's touching the tire. So you want to lift your scooter just a tiny bit so you lift the front wheel and then you can check your, the smoothness of the steering wheel. So we're going to proceed and raise the scooter up a little bit to see how our bearings are. Okay, so once you have to lift your scooter, you want to come here into the side of the scooter, grab your handlebar, and you want to twist it from one side to the locking point to the other one. And this one feels pretty smooth, you don't feel anything. If you feel like when you go to the middle, you feel like it gets like on a slot, that's because your bearings are shot. So you want to really take care of that. And the other thing you want to check is how loose they are. And the way you check that is you want to grab your wheel from here, from the bottom, from the back I say, and you want to like, Move it back and forward to see if you have any play. And if you do, it, that means that your bearings are a little bit loose and you will have to take care of that here at the top and it just does not a little bit. It's a pretty easy check, but you really want to check that because this is pretty dangerous. If your steering is loose or your bearings are chalk or they're getting corroded or anything, that will affect your safety of the riding and also how the bike performs. So you don't want to ride a bike with a steering wheel loose. That would be like very dangerous and you can end up damaging even more where the bearing sits and everything. So you really want to take care of that. But this one seems to be pretty nice. So we are good to go on here. Okay, so we finally got to the end of this video and uh, before you go for your test ride you want to make sure you check your tire pressure that's the last thing you want to do to the bike and we're going to proceed and do that you can actually pump your tires with a bicycle pump if you have one in hand you can use a bicycle pump or if you have a compressor that's okay if you're not sure what's the right pressure for your tires you can always check here in your glove box so you open it up and in the door this is a specification on a sticker that tells you the right pressure for your bike. We're right at 25. So for the front tire, from the GT, GTS or GTV, you only need 20, 26.1 PCI. And we're at 30 PCI. So what you can do, if you go over a little more, you just give it a couple of taps and remove some air from it measure it and we are right in there and that's it now you want to proceed and check the rear one And that's it. That's how you simple service one of these Vespa. Actually the same process for the GT, GTS or GTV. If you got to the end of this video, congratulations for servicing your Vespa by yourself at home with basic tools. You see how simple it is. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars taking it to a dealer. You can do it as simple as that. So make sure you check down the links in the description below. Click the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel for more great content and share with your friends. See you in the next one.